Hi, this is Mick Elliott from Electronic Specifier. I'm here on the MathWorks stand with Georgia Zucchelli, who is the product manager, RF and Mixed Signal. And first of all, Georgia, if you could uh, just talk us through an overview of MathWorks and exactly what you do here. Thanks, Mick. Uh, so MathWorks uh, uh, was founded in 1984. So we have a long history of accelerating the pace of engineering and science. Um, MathWorks uh, is the company that makes MATLAB and Simulink, so software that is used very much in any engineering and uh, scientific field. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are here today at the European Microwave Week primarily to talk about how MATLAB and Simulink can help the acceleration of the development of uh, wireless communication and radar systems. So we narrow it down a little bit from the broad scope of the entire science and the engineering field down to something that is a little bit more specific. Okay. And MathWorks is based where? The headquarters are in Natick, Massachusetts, so close to Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have uh, offices, I believe, in uh, 34 different locations around the globe. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, we are um, approximately 6,500 people, uh, so mostly in development. Uh, so it's, uh, okay. ah, it's right. privately owned, funded by engineers for engineers. Yes. So it's uh, uh, a good company to work for, right. I can tell Excellent. You. So just talk us through maybe some of the latest tools and workflows to accelerate development cycles and improve yeah. system performance. Um, yeah. Yes, so we have um, invested a lot at MathWorks um, in trying to help our customers in development of wireless communication and radar systems. And we, our, really, our mantra is really trying to cover the entire antenna to beat span primarily at the physical layer or at the, uh, at the implementation level, but focusing on algorithms and system integration. Um, so anyone that has used MATLAB know MATLAB as a, a numerical and scientific calculator, if you like, very powerful, not necessarily as a tool for developing wireless communication systems or radar systems, but we do have a specific um, uh, solutions for these specific areas. So for example here I have a small example that shows uh, how to model an RF chain mm -hmm. uh, using different components such as amplifier, filters, modulators, uh, uh, specified through uh, data sheet specifications uh, such as uh, gain or IP3 or even as parameters, as so scattering parameters. And um, you can analyze the chain with different techniques uh, such as harmonic balance for example and then you can create and generate a model automatically. So some of the convenience of the tools gives you is that you don't have to necessarily create a model starting from scratch, but you can start from a, a, an analysis. Uh, this is very important because I think uh, it helps uh, um, I, always, I always think that when I don't know exactly how things work, I want to have different ways to validate the results. And I like the duality of analysis and simulation. So analysis is something that is maybe static, it may be done at the power level, and simulation is, done, it is dynamic, using a real waveform and a real signal. Mm -hmm. uh, so different techniques, different numerical techniques, but they land on, um, on the same results. This gives me confidence that I know what I'm doing, I know how I'm modeling my system, and I know what to expect once I'm in the lab. Um, I'm gonna browse very quickly through the presentation here, this is actually a MATLAB example, it's a, it's a MATLAB live script. Um, so not only we, um, uh, you find the uh, RF toolbox and RF blocks to model the RF system, but we also have the antenna toolbox to model the antenna. So it provides the full wave electromagnetic solver of the method of moments. It is very suitable for analyzing radiating structures in air. It's very fast. So literally in a matter of seconds, you can design an antenna, scale it to the, uh, with the right dimension to be operating at your design frequency, and then analyze it. Look at the impedance, uh, look at the S parameters, so, so extract information such as uh, what is the bandwidth of my antenna, as well as the uh, directivity, the peak radiation pattern, and this type of properties. And then, of course, from an antenna, you can scale up to an array, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and then you can integrate it uh, um, into your system level model. So you see how you go from a simple chain to an, a system of parallel chains, to a single antenna, to an array of antennas, and then you put them together into a bigger model. So step by step, you build up on the complexity. 
And this process that I'm describing is really the process of um, model-based design. So you use the models as um, a little bit of a, uh, of a blueprint mm -hmm. for how yeah. your system is going to look like. Uh, once you have, um, for example, these are eight parallel chains of a transmitter, you have an antenna, what is next step is to do beam forming. So you can add phase shifters or time delays to steer the beam in a specific direction. Uh, and you can verify all of this again with electromagnetic simulation. So you can really look at how my pattern looks with real signals that are affected by noise, by nonlinearity, by impedance mismatches and so forth. And last but not least, uh, you can also integrate PCB components. Mm -hmm. So we are uh, investing heavily also on the electromagnetic side uh, so that uh, users can more easily integrate uh, uh, this type of components. And last but not least, uh, I want to jump ahead. You can integrate uh, full uh, standard compliant 5G waveforms uh, and measure the EVM. Okay. So wow. th this is really something that is very important because once you stream a real signal that might have 100, 400, 800 yeah. megahertz of yes. bandwidth yes. on your system, this mm. really tells you, is yeah. the system working yes or no? Sure. And are the impairments important? Mm -hmm. I work a lot with engineers that spend uh, hours and hours in optimizing their system yeah. uh, uh -huh. and sometimes uh, it's not necessary yeah. because a lot of there is a lot of digital signal processing that might be compensating some of the okay. impairments. Uh -huh. right. uh, so okay. that's a little bit about um, uh -huh. what we're presenting here today. Okay. What are the significant challenges the RF system designers are facing today? And I guess yeah. you've talked a little bit through how MathWorks can help. But yeah, yeah. Well, but why else? are we doing all of this? Yes. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Thanks for the question. Um, you can see I'm an engineer. I love diving into the solution <laughs> before even thinking of the problems. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, nowadays, a lot of the systems are moving to higher and higher frequencies mm -hmm. and larger bandwidth. Mm -hmm. This makes it uh, uh, harder for RF engineers because uh, certain effects that in the past you could uh, uh, ignore, uh, you cannot yeah, ignore yeah. it nowadays anymore. Yeah. So when you operate in the millimeter wave range, um, every half a dB counts. That's, uh, that's how I think. So the losses, the impedance mismatches, they need to be taken into account. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you operate on such large bandwidth, uh, it becomes twice as complicated yeah. because the behavior of the system changes uh, uh, at the center frequency versus at one gigahertz or two gigahertz. Also, systems are becoming very agile, yeah. very dynamic. Uh -huh. um, so the traditional uh, design methodology that was based on prototyping, rapid prototyping, trial and error, tweaking in the lab, it becomes almost prohibitive. So using models and simulation and model-based design, like I was saying, it's a way to anticipate uh, what, how the system works. And also, I would say that uh, models and simulation help uh, engineers understand the problems before the problems occur. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, once the problem occurs, if there are problems, and unfortunately there are always problems. There's always problems, yeah. Mm -hmm. It helps in debugging and understanding where the issues are coming from. What is the cause of my problem? Sometimes you have interfering signals coming into your system. Sometimes you have coupling. Having a model that allows you to experiment with this type of effect is very important. Mm -hmm. um, so I see a, a lot the high frequency, large bandwidth, and uh, also the need of integrating electromagnetic analysis into the system level as a real strong need uh -huh. uh, to address the, okay. the um, the problems uh -huh. of engineering today. Okay, and um, well, I guess we we have to talk about AI and what what role is that playing in antenna characterization and system optimization? Yeah, fantastic question. Uh, indeed, uh, we are talking a lot about AI um, because it's it's a little bit of a hype, and um, uh, what we tried to do uh, was uh, looking at AI not necessarily as a as a panacea, as a solution for everything, okay. uh, but looking at AI as a tool to help uh, engineers solve specific problems. Um, in a way, I like to think that uh, I don't care what is the solution to my problem uh, as long as it works. Yeah. I don't care if it is an analytical method or an AI-based method. Uh, that's the way I, I like to think about uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. a more maybe pragmatic approach to AI. Uh -huh. So to answer your question, 
uh, we have um, uh, solutions already in Antenna Toolbox that use AI uh, for different problems. One of the, my favorite problems is uh, a pattern reconstruction. It sounds like a simple problem, but it's actually fairly uh, complex. Uh, often system engineers, the design system, they design the entire RF front end, but they don't design the antenna. Yeah. The antenna is provided by somebody else. Yeah. Uh, so they go on their website of their antenna providers and often get only two orthogonal cuts, uh, like a vertical and, uh, and, uh, and an horizontal uh, representation of the pattern of the antenna. Yeah. And then they want to integrate that into their system level simulation and they maybe want to do beam steering. But the pattern only includes sparse data, so uh, how do they go from uh, uh, limited amounts of information to a full wave radiation pattern, uh, or full 3D radiation pattern? So there are analytical techniques that have been applied for many years uh, to sort of reconstruct the pattern, uh, to interpolate it. Uh, but this is also a perfect problem that can be solved with AI, because if you think about it, there's nothing else than an image reconstruction problem. Uh, for which AI has been used for many years. Uh, so in Antenna Toolbox you find a neural network that is shipping today that is actually relatively small, it's only 30 MB. It's already pre-trained. We pre-trained it with 100,000 patterns of antennas, uh, different type of antennas, of arrays. And users can just use this pre-trained network to uh, infer the 3D pattern from two orthogonal cuts. So it's a very specific solution. And if you like, you don't even need to know that it's AI based and it just works and provides better results uh, than analytical methods. Uh, so we validated it together with Rodia Schwartz, actually, uh, using real yeah. measurements. And this really works in real life. We are also looking at other applications of AI, like uh, using, uh, for example, uh, uh, surrogate optimization methods that uh, speed up uh, the optimization of complex uh, um, uh, cost functions, for example, there's a classical use of AI, and even uh, providing a pre-trained antenna objects uh, uh, to speed up the electromagnetic analysis. Okay. Uh -huh. But this the pattern reconstruction was a nice example to share with you. Okay, that's brilliant. Well, there you have it, uh, MathWorks, uh, a company founded by engineers to deliver solutions to engineers. And Georgia Kelly, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for your time and for your questions. Pleasure. Thank you.